Okay class, I'm going to go over this problem on how to record accounting transactions or how to actually analyze them as far as which accounts increase and or dis decrease. So I set myself up a, a table. Um, and first of all, you can see over here on the left, you have your assets. This is actually set up as an equation. And then on the right, you have your liabilities and your equity items. Okay. And the reason revenue and expenses are in the equity section is because net income flows into equity through retain earnings. Okay. So revenue and expenses give you your net income. And if you combine your net income with your beginning retained earnings and actually subtract your dividends, you'll end up with your ending retained earnings. So just so you can see here, dividends and expenses are reductions to equity overall. Okay, so let's just get right into it. It says on July... One, P. Swinder invested 60,000 cash in the company in exchange for common stock. So when you analyze that, 60,000 more in cash is, is being put into the company. And at the same time, the company is issuing 60,000 more in common stock. So it's a double effect. It's always a, a double effect. Uh, we call this double entry accounting. Okay. So... We have to keep this equation in balance. The left side has to remain equal to the right side. So for every entry you make, you're going to be doing more likely than not two things. Okay. It says July 2nd. Why don't we just do this so we don't have to keep writing July over again. So we've got, that would be July 1st. On July 2nd, the company rented office space and paid $50 cash for the July rent. Okay, so you got $500, I'm sorry, $500 decrease because cash was paid. And now you have an expense called rent expense. So if we shrink that a little. You can label that rent expense. Okay. July 3rd, the company purchased excavating equipment $4,000 by paying $800 cash and agreeing to a $3,200 balance due in 30 days. Okay. So first of all, you can record the $800 decrease in cash. See the verb paying. So $800 decrease in cash. And then we're going to have a, an accounts payable of um, $3,200. Okay. So accounts payable will be $3,200. Okay. And then at the same time, the company has an increase to equipment. So... 3,200 to accounts payable, 4,000 to equipment. So you have 4,000 more in asset, but you had to reduce cash, which is an asset. So this side of the equation, if you do the math, specifically July 3rd, that nets out to 3,200. And at the same time, you, your company now owes 3,200. Okay, let's try the fourth. I'm sorry, not the fourth, the sixth. July 6th. The company purchased office supplies for 500 cash. Well, office supplies are increased 500 and 500 cash is expected. Okay. So that nets out to a zero effect on the asset side of the equation. On the 8th, the company completed work for a customer and 
and immediately collected $2,200 for the work. So revenue is what the company earns when it performs the services or provides the goods that it's in business to do. So now on the 8th, the company has an increase of $2,200 in revenue. And it says in this line that they actually collected the cash when they did this work. So 2,200, there's a 2,200 increase to cash. Okay. On the 10th, the company purchased $3,800 of office equipment on credit. Okay, so on credit means that the company still owes. So accounts payable shows what the company owes. And now we're going to have, or the company's going to have, um, $3,800 more in equipment. So that increases. But at the same time, on the other side of the equation, the company will have $3,800 more in accounts payable. I'm going to come back with part two of this for you in a minute.